and I flew in uh, yesterday. And you know, there's one thing that I love about uh, flying Indian Airlines is the fact that you can understand what the pilot is saying. Yeah? Any other airlines, even American Airlines, you can't understand. I'm from Dubai. Arabic Airlines? Hell no. You have no idea what they're saying. This is what the pilot sounds like. Oh, this is your captain speaking, so... so, so we're going to be flying to 30,000 feet. Uh, Serving you today will be Sunita, Kavita, Papita, Lalita. And, uh, Shut up, man. And I've just started flying business class. Before that, I used to fly semi-business class. I'll explain to you what that means. I used to sit on the first seat of economy and half my leg used to be in business class shaking like that. I'm a Sindhi, so I think that <laughs> says a lot about how things are. I've been traveling all over the world. It's so much fun doing this for a living. But you know, every time I travel to London, any, anybody from the UK here? Right here, hello. I love the accent, it's so, you can say anything. Hello, my name's Nitin. Nice to meet you. What's your name, eh? Is it that bad? <laughs> Somebody put him on pause. <laughs> Play. But you know, every time I travel, I have people from England always telling me, come up to me, it's like, Hello, Nitin. You're right, mate. Listen, right. I have a question for you. Why? Why is it? Why? Do all you Indian people, all of you, not some, just all of you, speak so bloody fast all the time? Why? I'll tell you why, sir. Do you know it's almost two dollars a minute to call outside India? <laughs> it's expensive. And I love being Indian because Indians, we make everything work for us. For example, sir, in India, if a car stops on the road, it becomes a roundabout. We don't move the cow. We give directions using the cow. We call, Rajesh, from the cow, you take a left. <laughs> There's a horse, I'm standing right behind the horse. Come, come. That's how we do it. That's how it works for us. Like I mentioned, this is what I do full time. I don't have a regular job. But I think they ask you stupid questions at job interviews. Anybody from HR here? Anybody dealt with HR? Not Achar, as in I'm sure the creative people like Achar. Mango pickle, yes, let's make it. So they ask you stupid questions at job interviews. The last job interview I went for, they ask you this one question every time, yeah? Uh, so, Mr. Mirani, where do you see yourself in this organization in the next two years? I said, in your seat, bro. <laughs> he didn't find it funny. He says, so, so Mr. Mirani, tell, tell us, how, how do you handle a stressful situation? I just bloody got up and left. How else? <laughs> and I don't know why they have to ask you personal questions. Like, bro, I don't know you, you don't know me, we just met. Why do they have to get personal? I mean, what the hell is? Last position held and for how long? <laughs> well, that's between me and my girlfriend. Why should I tell you? <laughs> Chinese people, these guys can go from really happy to really confused in 1.2 seconds. I love these guys. True story, I was in Hong Kong, I saw these two Chinese people talking to each other and all I heard was this and one of them got confused while they were talking to each other. So Chinese guy is talking to him. One of them got confused. Crazy. It's impossible to get a deal from these guys, you walk, how many meals do they eat? You, they eat 78 meals a day. You walk into the store, they're always eating. You walk into China, Hong Kong or any Chinese store, excuse me, how much is... Uh, so excuse me, this teacher... You get angry, you're like, excuse me, how much is... And everything is just for you. Okay? Okay, okay. This for you, okay. This for you, okay. 
Just for you, special plaques, okay? Only twenty dollar for you, just for you, okay? Only for you, only for you, okay? What do Indian people say? I'll give you two dollars. That's why the Chinese are pissed off. They say twenty, we say two. Now, this Chinese person could be standing against a wall. Nothing behind. They are standing in the middle of a desert. There's nobody around them. They will still look back and negotiate with somebody. Every time you ask, "What? Okay, for you, uh, Kamla. Who is Kamla? <laughs> Who the hell is Kamla, and what is she doing in every shop in China? Why does this happen?" <laughs>